Recently, large language model like OpenAI GPT-4 and Google Palm 2 also incredible results about integrating visual inputs and text to perform multimodal tasks. Yes, you hear me right, multimodal. That's kind of next frontier of generative AI. What that means is unlike large language model, which takes text input, turns them into vector embedding so that it can understand the relationship between different words and use it to predict the next word coming out of sentence. Multimodal models can take more than text inputs like image, video, audio, or any type of data really. Behind the scenes, it tokenized different type of data and somehow created joint embedding so that it had a shared representation space that captured information from text, image, video, audios. And those shared representation enable it to solve problems and run reasonings across different type of data. For example, you can take a photo of your fridge and ask the model what kind of meals you can cook with all those leftovers. It will be able to understand what kind of foods you actually have in the image, generate a recipe based on those information. And it can also do some really advanced generation. If you give an image of a grass and also an audio, it will be able to generate or find an image with both stocks and grass as elements. During the GPT-4 demo, OpenAI also showcased ability where it can turn a wireframe sketch like this into a functional HTML website because it can understand the image, extract the core information to complete various tasks. So far, major large language model like GPT-4 hasn't released any multimodal feature yet. So most of us haven't got a chance to experience the power. But there's one multimodal released recently called Lava, which represents large language and vision assistant. It has ability to run multimodal tasks across both image and text. It is integrated with the Lama 2 and it is available for use right now. I tried it and it's very promising. Definitely give us a taste of what the future look like. So today I will give you a demo of how can you try it out as well as dive into a few real world use cases that I think could be very interesting. So you can go to GitHub and search for Lava, L-L-A-V-A. -A. They have a public page where you can uh, install and run it on your local machine. But there's also a demo link which will take you to this page that you can use right away. For example, I can put this image in and then ask a question, what is in the photo and what is the weather? Click submit. And it returned that the photo featured a golden retriever dog laying on grass and the weather is sunny because it has bright sunlight shining on the dog and the green glass. So you can tell it is more than just doing objective detection in the photo. It actually tried to understand the photo and doing the reasoning here. On the other side, I can put another photo in and then ask it to describe the photo to me. So it says the photo shows a man sitting in a chair wearing headphones smoking cigar. And I can even ask follow-up question like who is the man in the photo? And it says it is Elon Musk. So again, this is not simple object detection. It actually tried to understand the photo and probably figure out the connection between this photo and other type of text data around it. And to push this boundary a little bit more, I will upload a pretty complex image like this. You will actually need to read the image, understand what's going on here. So I will ask it, please generate a story based on this image. All right, so it generates story. It is able to understand it is four panel dramatic scene. And the story is a woman and baby were caught in a dangerous situation, possibly a sudden flood or strong current in the river, which is correct. And the man jumped into water and saved them, which is also correct. So this is pretty impressive. I think it missed the last part about the man got a medal, but I would say it got 80% right. What's more impressive is that it is able to understand the facial expression. So overall, I'm very impressed about the performance. And now let's dive into a few real world use cases that I think could be very interesting. So one use case I really want to try out is product development. I was so blown away when OpenAI made a demo that turned a sketch like this into a real website. And if this capability is possible, I think there will be a lot of interesting case studies about how designers or product managers can use this during early ideations. So I draw a similar type of sketch with the joke website and add the image in. And I will use the same prompt that OpenAI used, write a brief HTML to turn this small cup into a website. And let me try this. All right, so it does generate HTML. Let me try to copy those things into a Visual Studio file. So this is joke website created. I would say you only get like 40% of the requirement here. It's not as good as a GPT-4, but it does really understand the structure and try to recreate it. And maybe my sketch is not very good. But a more realistic use case, I think, would be giving GPT a image of the mocha design and then let it break down the requirement for me. So I'll drag and drop this mocha of the Uber app and then give it a prompt that you are a senior product manager. Please turn this mocha into detailed product requirement doc. Okay, so it is able to identify that it's car sharing app without me mentioning anything. That's a really good start. And it is able to break down the interface, navigation. The user need to be able to select cars and also make a reservation. 
and unlocking. Okay, that's a bit weird. Probably it added a bit more extra stuff. So it is able to break down a product requirement doc from this. And think about if we can use this to create a product requirement and give it to other type of large language model that is really good at programming, like small AI or GPT engineer, then this could be some really interesting combination here. The next use case is content curation. Other social media platforms spend a lot of resource on curating the content. I want to test out whether this is good at curating and classifying the content. So for example, I can put this image where it seems pretty violent. So I will give it a prompt that please give this image a violent score out of 10. So it returned that I will give this image violent score 8 out of 10 because this woman is holding a gun and covered in blood. This is probably pretty aligned with how I will read it as well. Next, I will change to another photo with this should be pretty nonviolent. All right, so it says, I will give this image a violent score out of one out of 10. Let's try something more controversial. So this image should be funny, but there are also elements like fire to see whether it can tell. All right, so we got the results. Uh, it is violent score four out of 10. This is fire, which is dangerous, but the child's smell suggests that she is not in immediate danger and might not be fully aware of the severity of the situation. This is a pretty good rating. So the initial testing results for content curation is really promising. And with prompting tactics like few short prompts, it can probably do a really, really good job in terms of content curation. And some other use cases follow along the line with image classification is in medical and health diagnosis. For example, I can give an image and ask a question. What is wrong with my foot? What should I do? It is able to give me some basic diagnosis that it is fungal infection. I don't know if it's correct or not, so please let me know if it is wrong. And then it is able to give some suggestions about how you can fix those issues. And I can try another. So I can give it an image of plant and ask, is there anything wrong with my plant? If so, how can I fix it? And it is able to give me a few suggestions. With enough training data, I think this could be a really promising use case in medical and biotech. While making this video, I start thinking about is CAPTCHA going to be useless? Because those image text model can probably crack most of those capture use case easily. So let me grab an image like this and then ask it to extract a text displaying image. Okay, it kind of gets things in the middle, but it's definitely not going to pass. Let me try another one. All right, again, it is wrong. So I guess the good news is out of box CAPTCHA is still going to work with this model. But the thing is from all the different research paper, it has shown the ability with few short prompts, you can actually fine tune the performance of the model for specific tasks, which means with proper fine tuning and few short prompts, it is probably something can be cracked easily. And I already found there are models like Microsoft's TROCRs that is doing extremely good job in terms of capture letters. And I can even try with more complex example like this, and it works perfectly. Same for this one as well. So I do think that capture verification method so it's probably won't be effective very soon and there will be a new type of verification process that we need to figure out. And the last use case I want to share that is really inspiring is from Google. So in Google Palm East research paper, they integrate multi-model model with a robot. So they give a robot a prompt that bring me the rice chips from the drawer. And then the robot is able to generate a plan like a normal agent based on both visual and text inputs. And then it starts executing the tasks as the robots move and get new visual inputs. It also starts updating the plan as well. And this allows robot to complete some very complex tasks because of this both visual and text inputs. And this kind of really showcase what is possible with multimodal models. So this is a large multimodal model. As I mentioned, models like Ava can already be tried out today. You can read more details, go to the demo website to use right away, or go to their GitHub link, try to install on your local machine as well. I had a lot of fun playing with Lava, so I definitely encourage you to go and try it out. And please comment below about the interesting use case you start exploring. If you like this video, please consider give me a subscribe, and I see you next time.